I am Ines Alea from PolaroidCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create a nice low poly background effect in Adobe After Effects. If you don't wish to follow this tutorial or you want to support our channel, you can always buy our low poly background elements with the link in the description. It also doesn't require any plugins and you can use it in any kind of video editing software. It includes a tutorial on how to use it. For this tutorial, you will need a plugin. So if you want to follow along with this tutorial, you need a plugin called Trap Coat Mirror. Um, so if you have that, let's get started with the tutorial. Let's go to a new composition, make it full HD, make it 30 FPS and 10 seconds long. And I will rename this to Main Comp. Click OK. And now I will right click here, New Solid, and I'll apply my low poly background. So I will go to Effect, Trap Coat, and apply mirror right here. We're going into the geometry. Here I will increase my size in X so it covers the entire canvas and same goes for the Y. We get something like this. Then I'll go into the shader and right away it will change the density to something like flat. Now we can apply a new light. We do need a light to actually see the low poly effect so uh, let's create something um, like a point light. Color white and intensity of maybe 50 for now and click OK. And right away you will see something like this. This doesn't look like much, but you can do some really creative stuff with this, I suppose, so definitely up to you. Let's click on our low poly background again and let's change it up a little bit. So right now we have X and Y vertices and currently set at 50. Now let's change this to like 10 and something like 8. And the reason why I actually enter a higher value in the X is because it's for the width and the width is actually wider than the height. So it's kind of obvious that you don't use the same amount here. Maybe add something like 12 here, something like nine. And right away, because of our light, we get something really cool like this. So if we don't apply our light, we get something like uh, entirely black. So uh, let's click on our light and maybe reposition it a little bit. So we can position it right over here, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, depending on your preference, of course, uh, let's put it right here and also pull it back a little bit so you get more light on the entire shot. You can also zoom in if you want some more like something more like this, um, but then you get these harsh highlights. I wouldn't suggest these as well. So maybe something like this, it looks kind of good, I, I suppose. And then you can also duplicate the light and maybe position it like right over here uh, to fill up these dark areas. Press A twice on the keyboard that will allow you to change the settings of your light, maybe change it to something like 10, then you get something like this right here. It kind of fills up the blacks right here. Go back into mirror and let's see what we can change as well. In the material option, you can change a few th uh, settings, play around with these, but I don't think it's actually necessary to change anything. Uh, but right here, you can do like the shininess of your background. So I will keep it actually at 10. I, I thought it was kind of good. And for the diffuse, maybe you can change that a little bit. Do something like 75 and the specular something like 90. Okay, so the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want any white colors. I want grayscale tones and something like this looks fine to me. Let's see uh, what we can do with this as well. So um, apart from that, you don't need to change anything else. We can right click new and add a new solid layer. We're going to rename this to color. So this is going to control our color, of course. So we'll click OK, put it on top. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter. It's OK. Uh, we can go to effect generate and add a ramp gradient ramp right here and then we're going to right click well click here and put it on a radial ramp so we get something like this the black color is going to be our highlight so we'll change this to something like orange somewhere around here also a tip is to not really go into the saturated tones i uh, keep it kind of a flat color profile as this really fits the low poly effect um, depending on your project of course you can experiment with other colors but just keep it somewhere around here and click ok then click on the white and this we're going to um, make it kind of uh, this kind of orange well pink kind of color a little bit more red okay there we go and click ok and this is going to be our color. So now we can click here on the mode. If you don't see that, toggle the switches right here and change it to an overlay. And then you will get something like this. 
So of course this is uh, not as good as uh, the original preview and that's because we have very harsh highlights. I'll double tap A here on the light one and maybe change it to something like 35 and then also go back into our background and we still have to change up a few things uh, after we apply the color because then you really see a result. I want to decrease my amplitude a little bit. So we'll go into the fractal and right here we see amplitude. I want to change this to something like 50 or maybe even lower, something like 35. Okay, this is looking better in my opinion. And then we can play around with this light a little bit more. Let's see where we can position this because I want more detail right here. Maybe zoom it in a little bit more or actually out. Okay, I'm getting something that I like. And there we go, we can go back and do the color and maybe add a little bit more color here or actually something like that. Go back into the low poly and decrease the specular a little bit more, something like 75 or even 50. I will keep it at 60, I think that looks fine. And now of course you can also animate your background because currently it's just a flat background which you can use as a background for your desktop, <laughs> it looks pretty cool. Um, but you can animate the evolution right here. So if you go to the beginning of our timeline, click on the stopwatch for evolution, go to the end of your timeline and decide how much you want to animate it. You can preview this and it's going to animate your background like so. You can see it's animating right here. If you don't want a very jittery motion, you can decrease the complexity to something like two and also decrease the amplitude. Well, actually just the amplitude for X and Y, uh, which are most important, something like 50 because you're not going to see the difference in the actual result currently, but you will see the difference in the animation. So it's going to pick a value um, randomly from, from these numbers. So you get something like this, looks pretty cool. And if you want to zoom in or have like closer to the camera polygons, you can just decrease these numbers right here and then you will get something like so. You can also decrease this and get uh, kind of results like this. So um, yeah, it's completely up to you what you do with it, of course. And then you can go back into the amplitude and maybe increase it a little bit more over here and also increase the diffusion and decrease specular and shininess. Or actually the shininess is pretty cool. And then if you go back to the color, you can change the colors up uh, to whatever you like. So maybe you want some more kind of these colors with a nice blue. A little too green. Reposition the colors. And you get something like this. So really cool effect definitely have a play with it i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more thank you so much for watching and goodbye